I'm going to read for you beginning in verse 13 and ending in verse 13, chapter 2 of verse Peter. He says, therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. I'll repeat it just in case you missed it. So short. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. We'll go no further than that. We're going to dissect this verse here. Um, or at least that section of the verse. It begins a section of scripture here that Peter has given us, which contains, if you would read a little bit further, three rapid-fire commands from God through Peter to all Christians everywhere concerning submission. This is a word that gets a lot of flack in our culture. Uh, I don't know about all cultures everywhere and over all times, but submission seems to carry with it a little bit of a negative stigma. However, Scripture includes it as a theme from beginning to end, and so we, as we do, going verse by verse through the Bible, deal with it when it comes up. Submission is the theme that starts here very strongly in Peter's letter. And in verse 13, it starts, and then it continues through uh, chapter 3, verse 7. So we've got a bit to go here. Um, But submission for you, as a theme, began on the day you were born. And it isn't going to end until you're dead. You will always be called to submit to someone, somewhere, sometime, always, until this life is over. So this is an issue that deserves careful attention. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit now uh, would fill this room, fill our minds, fill our hearts. uh, Allow us to bow our knee in submission to whatever it is that you have to say to us concerning this issue. We pray for your help in this because no one in here is perfect with this issue. Everyone has something to learn regarding submission. And for that, we need you. Help us, please. Amen. I'm going to leave Peter behind for a moment. And turn to Genesis chapter 2. You can do it also if you like. I'm actually going to be reading more out of Genesis chapter 2 than I am out of 1 Peter chapter uh, 2. So, In Genesis chapter 2, I'll remind you that uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 are um, events that take place before the world got sour. So they're a, a very nice read. It's very uplifting and fun to think about what it might have been like back then as God created the earth and everything in it and the universe and man and trees and animals and coffee. So in chapter 2, starting in verse 8, it says that the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go to verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Two trees. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both of them right in the midst of the garden. Both of them easily accessible. Both of them existing at that point in a perfect world. Both of them equally created by God both of them to be declared good by God and both happen to bear edible fruit. 
only. One of them is allowed, and the other is forbidden. One leads to life, and the other leads to certain death. And here Adam is given a choice. Submit to God or rebel against God. This is the first command that we see in Scripture that God gives to man, and it is therefore the first opportunity that we see God giving man to submit. It's the first time ever that God was, uh, man was given the opportunity to submit. Now, I'm going to back up to something I already stated. Submission is oftentimes seen as negative, isn't it? You, you think of submission and it carries negative connotations to it. But I want us to see something here that submission predates sin. Submission was in play before sin was. So submission is not the result of the fall. It was around when everything was still perfect. It was around when God had yet declared everything, quote, very good in chapter 1, verse 31. So submission isn't bad. Submission is a good and perfect gift that comes to us from God, like every other good and perfect gift that comes down from above, as James says. So God, in chapter 2 of Genesis, is giving Adam the opportunity to submit out of love. Not punishment. Out of love. Evil isn't in the world yet. Sin hasn't entered the picture. Submission, however, had. It's not punishment. Though we sometimes see it as such. You're to submit to your boss. You may feel like that's punishment. It's not. Married women are to submit to their husbands. That might feel like punishment sometimes. It's not meant to be. You are submit to the authorities. All the ordinances of men. Which may sometimes feel like God is uh, against you. In making that command, he's not. This is an opportunity that he is offering you out of love. He doesn't have you do it because something you did was wrong. He's doing it to protect you from the wrong that will come if you choose not to submit. It's a means of protection. And you'd think that it wouldn't have to be commanded. Like if it's good for us and it comes from a loving God and and it's meant for our protection and our blessing, then why does it need to be commanded? You know what I mean? Like submit to it. Like why does this even have to be in the Bible? The reason is, is because that you and I, whether we like it or not, we're born into sin. And we have a spirit of rebellion that comes with it. And that spirit of rebellion stupidly assumes that submission is your worst enemy. It isn't true. Not only is submission not bad, but if we kept reading in Genesis 3 and then in Genesis 4, we would clearly see that rebellion is not good. And we only have those two choices. Those are the only options That God has given us. Tree of life. Or the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Which leads to death. Life and death. Those two trees. Submit. Or rebel. Peter says. Therefore. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. For the Lord's sake. Submit yourselves. Do you get that? I'm going to dissect this verse. I'm starting with the word yourself. You do it yourself. Submission is a voluntary act. It's a decision that you have. And you make that decision when you're faced with a choice between submitting or defying. It's a choice. You do it. I don't need to make you submit. God is saying no one should make you submit. No one should have to force you into submission. Do it willingly. 
submit yourselves. A lot of times we think of submission in terms of being controlled, and I think that's why we hate it. We just don't like being controlled. We want to be in control, don't we? Does anybody here hate being in control? You want to be in control. To some measure, in some area of your life, you want control. You want to dictate how things go and how they turn out. You want control. We're, we're control freaks, you know. And so when somebody, we feel like somebody takes that away from us, we bristle, if not rebel. And submission seems to carry with it this element of having control taken away from you. But if you think about it, submitting is an act of self-control. You're in control when you submit. You're the one deciding to do it. It's when you're forced to do it that control is taken away. Better for you to submit when you're still given a choice. Yes? Because then you retain control. And might I add that never are you so out of control as when you rebel. That is out of control. If you've ever lashed out, if you've ever rebelled, if you've ever... That's out of control. God is offering you the opportunity to walk in self-control. You are in control when you choose to submit. And there may be no greater demonstration of self-control than that of submission especially to a disagreeable authority figure. You want to demonstrate your ability to control yourself, then deliberately volunteer yourself to submit to a leader that you don't necessarily agree with all the time. Like a boss, a husband, a pastor, A government, instructors, officers, law providers, judges. Don't wait until it's forced. Do it while you have the choice. And by the way, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and kindness and gentleness and self-control. It's in there. So self-control, submission, is a very, very spiritual activity. It's not just a blanket command that you have to obey and, oh, i got to submit. You know, submit. This is a spiritual activity. And a lot of the spiritual warfare that you engage in, if you ever engage in, like if you're in the battle and you're in the fight, a lot of that warfare is going to be fought on this field. In the field of submission. And whether you win or lose that war is going to be decided by whether you submit or not. And I know this for a fact. And so does Eve. She lost. She wouldn't submit to the command that God had given her husband. Who subsequently gave it to her. God didn't tell Eve not to eat that fruit. God told Adam. It's implied that Adam told Eve. And Eve was to submit to her husband and didn't. She lost the war. That was some of the greatest spiritual warfare that the Bible ever shows us. And she got beat. On the battlefield of submission. And we, thousands of years later, are still suffering for it. And we don't think submission is important. We think that we can rebel and there's no consequences to that. You think you can treat your husband like that in the home and get away with it? You think that you can treat your boss like that at the workplace and get away with it? It simply isn't true. And if you think that it is, you've been talking to a snake. I'll go a step further here and say that you can't just choose to obey either. Obedience sounds real nice, but it doesn't count. You have to submit. And there's a difference between obedience and submission. You can outwardly obey, but don't 
be too quickly satisfied by the fact that you've done what you're told if in your heart you carry bitterness and animosity for the authority figure that made the demand. Obedience itself, by itself, will you not go too far? So you obey. Okay. You might be impressed, but God isn't. You still got a wicked heart in there. And you hate your boss. And you hate your husband. And you despise authority. You've got a problem, even if you're obedient. That's a mask that people wear to protect themselves from reality. You need God to fix your wicked heart so that it matches what your obedient hands might be doing. And if there's a mismatch, then it's not over yet. Obedience is always a lot easier than submission. Anybody can do what they're told. Anybody. But what really challenges us is to truly love the one who's telling us what to do. Obey? Fine. Submit? That's tough. Ask demons. They do what Jesus tells them to do. Exit that man, all 2,000 of you, and enter into that herd of swine. And they obey. Let me kill Job. No, you can't kill him. You can give him diseases. You can ruin his life, but you can't kill him. Okay. Satan obeys. But I'm telling you right now, that obedience, obedience alone doesn't go very far. Submission is more than a command, according to John Piper, if you know who that is. Submission is more than a command. It's actually a miracle. If you are able to submit the way God requires, it's a miracle because it can't be done properly without God's help. I'm convinced of that. You can't submit. You're, you can obey without God's help. Tell me what to do. Sure, I'll do it. Pagans can do that. Only Christians can submit the way that God requires. Because to do it in the heart takes the Holy Spirit. It takes the fullness of God. You can choose to obey all you want, but the war isn't over if your heart is still hard. A lot of people might appear to be submissive on the outside, but don't be fooled. They're an absolute rebel on the inside if the heart isn't fixed by the Lord. Think of this. Judas managed to obey for three long years in a row. But his lack of submission caught up to him in the end, didn't it? And yours will too. Hey, you can white knuckle it through everything. You can white knuckle it through marriage until the kids are gone. You can white knuckle it for a few more weeks or months or years until you finally blow up at the boss and come back with an AK. Teach him and everybody else that works here a lesson. We see a lot more of that going on, don't we? You can white knuckle obedience as long as you like, but in the end, you will be found out. You need to be warned, because I, I don't know if Judas got it. Extremely obedient, wasn't he? Go to these towns and do this and that, and don't bring a knapsack. Okay. But Judas, your heart, your heart, you're not submissive. So there you are, serving the Lord and doing great things for the Lord, and you're chalking it up like you're a wonderful man. No, you're not. Your heart is full of hate and pride and independence. And God's nowhere in there. Your entire ministry is a sham. Your marriage is a failure. Yet on the outside, everything looks wonderful. To choose submission, because it is a choice, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. If you choose submission, you will find that this is not only extremely difficult, it is entirely impossible. You need Christ. You need Christ. And if you don't have him, no wonder you rebel. There's obviously something pretty undesirable about submission. I, I readily admit that. I, I, submission, it's a challenge for your pastor. And you're like, what? You submit to people? Um, yeah, and if I didn't, I'd be a dangerous man. 
there are people in my life who tell me what to do and I do it. And my heart gets all twisted and bent over backwards and I have to wrestle with feelings just like anybody else. But I don't let it rest simply because I've obeyed the command. I plead with God to fix my heart. I beg God to fix me from the inside because I know he's not buying what's on the outside. We're being told to submit. And though it's extremely difficult, and I say impossible, we're being told to choose it intentionally, even though it's the most undesirable of the two options. What do you think I'd like to do? Submit or rebel? The same answer that you have. In the flesh, I want to rebel. <clears throat> Tell me what to do. Don't think it hasn't crossed my mind once or twice. Don't think that it doesn't come into my mind that I'd like to tell people off. That I'd like to stand up and scream injustice and how can you treat me this way and this isn't fair. And God goes, you shut your mouth and you submit like I told every other Christian in Christian history, many of whom listened to me. Because what you've been told to do isn't killing you like it did some of them. So hold your peace and serve me well by doing what you're told with the right heart. You obey, I'll help you with the rest. Deal? And then I'm left with a choice. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Every. All of them. All the authorities. Each one of them that you have in your life. And there are, in most people's lives, maybe yours, multiple ordinances to which God expects you to submit. I've touched on a few of the basics. Any one of you in here who counts me as your pastor, guess what? You're to submit to my authority. If you won't do that, you're in trouble. If you don't like it, find another church with a pastor under whose authority you will submit. Some of you who are part of this church and have me as your pastor, you're also married to a man. Now you got two. We all belong to the United States of America here as citizens, unless uh, I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Now you've got three, two, three. They're, they're adding up. You have jobs. You've got bosses, you've got managers, you've got supervisors. Some of you, you've got, I mean, you're like, oh, thanks for the reminder. I didn't even know. You know, I mean, you got, you start adding them up. You got multiple ordinances to which you submit. And the Bible here is saying, don't leave any of them out. You submit to each and every one, multiple. Wives have husbands, children have parents, some have teachers. We all have governments, we all have laws. There are bosses, there are managers, there are pastors, there are landlords, there are judges, there are meter maids. They have authority over you. When they're writing a ticket and slipping under your uh, wiper and you run out there, hey, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. You got a ticket. Don't argue. You can pay at the courthouse. Every ordinance of man. No matter where you go, you'll have opportunities to submit. Isn't that nice of God? To, in love, arrange your life in such a way that you always have the opportunity to be blessed. No matter where you go, no matter where you live, no matter how old you are, no matter... You always have an opportunity to submit. There's no escaping this. Now, ordinance of man, what, what's being spoken of here? Ordinance of man. That's an institution that God made up 
but then gave man to run like marriage marriage is god's idea but then he places man at the head of the household and says here now you're responsible for the marriage that i hold the patent to work god thought that up the bible opens with god working but then he gave it to man to manage so it's God's idea, but he gives the responsibility to men. Government, jobs, families. He's arranged your life so that submission is unavoidable, yet some are going to try to avoid it anyway. They don't like submission, so they're self-employed. They don't like uh, submitting to the government, so they buy a parcel of land in Alaska and try and, um, you know, I love watching those shows, by the way. Uh, but they're entirely foolish, those people that uh, live up in Alaska and cut off all contact and just live off the land. It's kind of cool in its own way, but um, what are you doing? I'll tell you, you aren't serving the Lord picking blueberries and killing moose. That's all you do? Who are you ministering to? When was the last time you had human contact? Who are you leading to the Lord? So, so, so you, you can live your life avoiding all submission, and some people are pretty successful at that, you, you can hop from church to church to church because you, you, you just don't like, you never find a pastor that does it like you would. You can go from husband to husband to husband. You can like, you know, Liz Taylor, nine times divorced because, you know, there ain't no man that's worthy of leading me. There's something wrong with you. Some people are just way too careful about who they give their submission to. Going from church to church to church and job to job and trying to find the ideal life to live so that they never have to go through the pain of what submission calls you to. The reason a person would do that is because they value their submission way too highly. They don't think anybody deserves it. And I'll tell you that, yes, submission is valuable. It is a Christian virtue right up there with love and honesty and all the rest. And this is valuable. If it wasn't, if submission wasn't valuable, I don't think God would bother to make this command. Submission is good. It's valuable in the home. It's good in the workplace. It's good at the church. It's good for the community. It's good for the country. But your submission in particular is no more valuable than anybody else's. So don't dare be so reluctant to spend it only on those that you choose. You give it freely to anyone beneath whom God has placed you. It's his command. So submission doesn't mean hopping from job to job and church to church until you finally find the right mix of leaders in your life. And it doesn't really count as submission if you never have a problem with how they lead. I mean, if you agree constantly, that's not really submission. Submission only comes into play when what they're doing seems wrong to you, right? Submission only comes into play when there's conflict. You fully disagree. Right? What do you do? Two choices, life or death, this fruit or that fruit, what's allowed by God or what's forbidden by God. You choose, submit or rebel. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. I want to go and pick another word from that statement there. Man. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Ugh. See, because we're not being told here to submit to God. Even if it's implied, which it is. But what's clearly being told here is that we're to submit ourselves to man. The point of this passage is that we have a responsibility before God to submit to man. 
men and women, to all human authority, without discrimination, you're to submit to them. They don't have to be male. They don't have to be kind or considerate. Wives, wives, they don't have to be competent. They don't even have to be Christian. They can be whoever they want. The only criteria they have to fulfill is that they're in charge. They can be as godless and as cruel and as violent as they want. If they're in charge, they're in charge. And your opinion of them doesn't matter at all. God won't allow you to excuse yourself from doing your job of submitting to man on account of that man's refusal to submit to God. If you do, you'll be judged by God just as surely as he'll judge them. You remember the context of this letter. This is being written to people beneath the the dictatorship of Caesar Nero. Peter's telling them to submit in a scenario where there is a ruthless, bloodthirsty maniac in charge. A man who poisoned his own mom. A man who murders anybody who gets in his way. A conniving jerk who shifts blame onto people who don't deserve to be punished. And Peter comes along and goes, submit. But he's not a Christian at all. We think he's the Antichrist. That's the rumor that's submit. Some of you probably think that your husband is the Antichrist. Submit. Why are you smiling? Listen. God didn't give you the authority to choose when and where and how and to whom you would submit. He gave you the authority to choose whether you would or not. And as much of a fool as Nero was, and fool, that's putting it lightly, as much of a fool as Nero was, he serves to teach us a lesson here that God would have the wise in Christ, which I hope you are, submit themselves sometimes to the biggest fools in the world, to the biggest incompetent, violent, godless fools of the world. And I think God gets more glory when the one under authority is stronger and smarter and more capable than the one in authority. And yet, for the sake of God's design, chooses to submit to God by submitting to that man. I I am not the only husband in church this morning who has a wife that's most likely far more capable than I am in many areas of living. Probably some people in this room who know more than me when it comes to the Bible and who have more experience than me and who who could perhaps do a better job of pastoring except God didn't call you to do it, he called me to do it. There are some people in this room who are such excellent employees, that they could maybe run a better business than the man or the woman they work for, and yet God didn't call you to run the show. It's theirs. And we all have the opportunity to God to submit ourselves regardless. And God oftentimes does that. Um, 
puts people above you that are less competent than you or less caring than you or less godly than you um, because you have a lot to learn in submitting to those that aren't. And you do have a lot to learn by it, and they are wonderful. They are delicious lessons to learn because they're so, so elusive. Even in the Christian realm, I bet you there's a ton of people that are never going to learn that lesson because when it comes down to it, they just aren't going to choose submission. Certainly not to that man. But I'll tell you, the more corrupt the environment, the more desperately it needs the submissive spirit of a faithful Christian like you. You know what Rome really needed? At the time of Caesar Nero? You know what the remedy was for all of the violence and all of the corruption and all of the chaos that was there in that city and in that region on account of that one despicable man? You know what they needed most? Submissive Christians. The city of Rome and the entire empire needed to be inundated with submissive Christians. And that's what God calls for. Your home feels abusive, it feels oppressive, your job, your, your workplace feels just tense and, 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 you, you can't, and you feel like there's problems and it's, okay, then you know what's needed. Choose submission. It's always going to be a challenge. Always going to be a challenge. Because anyone that you're called to submit to they all have some element of, of imperfection in them. You know, you're never going to find the perfect boss. You're never going to find the perfect husband. You're never going to find the perfect pastor. And I'll tell you this. Even if you did find the perfect pastor, husband, boss, um, you'd still be irritated because they're perfect and you're not. So they're just going to irritate you no matter what. I mean, it's a lose-lose. So, so we, I mean, I, Jesus was perfect and he irritated everybody. Let's crucify the boss. Dang. Free, finally. Not really. Don't assume that you're submitted to God when you won't do what you're being told by men. Because you're not. You're just not. Your act of submission to the ordinances of men and women is an act of submission to God. And if you won't do what they're telling you to do, then you are in rebellion against your creator. And that is a terrible offense to commit. There is a caveat to this. The only exception to your command to submit is when what's being demanded of you by man is sin against God. So if what's being required of you would also require you to disobey what God has clearly made known, then that becomes for you the opportunity to put God first and refuse to submit to the authorities that still, even as you refuse, have the ability to fire you, beat you, kill you, it's what got Peter killed. It's what got Paul killed. It's what got James killed. It's what gets Christians killed all over the place and has been for thousands of years. But let me say that even if the authority demands something of you that would offend God, even in your refusing to obey on that account, um, you're not allowed to just unleash with rebellion. There's a way to refuse to obey an ungodly instruction that still honors God. And there's a way to do so that greatly dishonors him. You know, if your boss comes to you and goes, you know, um, I, was, I was thinking I would have you work on Sunday. What? I have church on Sunday. God wants me at church. So you know what? Gee, I'm out of here and I don't... And then, you know, you just, and you're going to take as many employees with you as you possibly can. And you're going to run around behind everybody's back and start causing trouble. And no, no, that's not honoring to God. 
you just go, listen, um, I need to be at church. They count on me. I've obligated myself to something there that I, I, I feel responsible for. And with, with all due respect, please, no. And if they put their foot down, well, then you might need to choose between that job and what God's called you to. You wouldn't be the first Christian in history to do that. Me and my wife both. How many times have we done this? Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. This is the last one here. For the Lord's sake. Not for your sake, though I do believe that God honors submission. I do believe that God rewards submission. I do believe that God smiles on submission. Um, But we don't submit for our sake. We do it for his sake. It's for the Lord's sake. So you need to be warned here that submission may or may not produce joy in you. So don't count on it. Submission may or may not be profitable to you. It may or may not be immediately gratifying. It may or may not reverse your fortune. It may or may not eliminate the pain that you're feeling. It may or may not provide safety. We don't know. Um, What we do know, and this is the consistent, this is the constant. Every single time you submit, we do know that it will please God. You do this for the Lord's sake. Why? Because he likes it. He likes seeing you becoming more like his son. He loves to see that in people. He loves to see that the sacrificial death that his son paid is working in human beings that aren't his son. He says, this is my adopted child. Not my son. I've only got one begotten son. But boy, you look a lot like him when you submit. It's pleasing to the Lord. And God will give you opportunities. And, and when you see the opportunity to submit, when you have the option between submission and rebellion, choose submission. He's going to give you those opportunities. He's going to do to you what he did to Adam. He's going to place before you two options. God himself is going to put them both in plain view. God will give you free access to either one. And to you, they're both going to look acceptable and they're both going to look equally good. They're both going to appear harmless. Only one will be allowed and the other will be forbidden. When God gives you the opportunity to submit yourself or to rebel, you have to understand that one will lead to life and the other one will lead to death. And like God did to Adam, he's going to give you the opportunity to submit. Again, this is not an act of divine punishment. He, he isn't written submission into the cosmos and into your life to somehow punish you. You've done something wrong. No, you might be doing everything right. And God wants to bless you Somehow, that's why you have the boss that you can't stand. He's calling you to submit. That's why, that's why you don't always agree with the government. Is there any country on the planet where every citizen agrees with what the government does? We think we got it so bad here. And of course, the conservatives are all happy, but we won't be forever. It goes back and forth. And you ain't going to like it. Every four years, it changes. We don't like the laws. We don't like this and that. That's okay. Well, God's not punishing you. He's giving you opportunity. It's God's way of blessing you. Get that in your head. It's God's way of blessing you. Rebellion might feel good, but it always does you harm. And submission might feel bad, but it always does you good. Always. Always.